Hi, welcome to Two Non-Doctors. We are doing, I don't know what this is. I don't want to call it a bonus. We're calling it a get to know us video because you've been asking for video and we're not smart enough to figure out how to do audio and video together. We know how to so do it. We just our... didn't want to put on makeup. So we were like, we don't know how. <laughs> I still haven't put on makeup. Um, <laughs> we're, we're getting, we're, we're learning. And this is, this is the thank you for dealing with us learning. I think that's, does that sound fair? Yeah. Nope. I love <laughs> it. Get to know us. Um, so uh, we'll just, elaborate on some stuff that we feel like you should know about. So, um, Maria, when's, when's the last time you saw a doctor? <laughs> I, I, I know this it's is just, like a bad first date. I, I'm just like, hi, I'm Liz. Have you been to a medical professional this year? I, I just, I, I know that this is a prepared question, but it, it feels so <laughs> accusatory. Maria, when's the last Maria? time you saw a doctor? Cause yeah. you're fucked. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It was a few months ago. I just, uh, I saw one for just getting tested to make sure everything was normal and everything's fine. I don't have any cancerous cells. Congratulations. So, it's, yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, just making sure everything's running like it's supposed to do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, that, I mean, uh, like I, I didn't, um, I don't have any juicy thing to say about doctors. I went a few months were ago. You, hmm. were, you, were you scared or is just a, like, I'm check getting up. older and I, yeah. Okay. It's a checkup. You I have don't... to do them every couple of years. I mean, I should say that it was a pap smear and you just have to do them every couple of years. That's the only doctor I go to on a regular basis to the point where like, I, I worry about the rest of my body, but I've done nothing. Like yeah. I like my gynecologist. So I go to her and I go, Hey, is this all? cool and she's like yeah it's all cool and I'll be like well then I'll assume since it's in the middle of my body <laughs> that everything else is cool yeah <laughs> if you go to the dentist and the gynecologist that's all you need and everything else kind of like if, if everything's going well there <laughs> then the rest of you probably fine I feel like they would send a message I feel like I use my vagina as like a like a little alert system that's just like hey you should check your left leg like I just <laughs> Like what is it with you and your yeah? You bring up your leg all the time. You're like, my leg's fine. I don't. My leg doesn't smell like body odor. My leg is. I run, and my legs are very important to me. That's. Okay. I feel like that's that's just my logic. Um, Do you know, I wanted to start running after we we did a running podcast, and because you inspired me, and I ordered shoes that they're gonna come like May 28th, so I have some time. <laughs> anyway, sorry. When was the last time you went? I'm sorry. I just love that you, that you got inspired. And then now because of the pandemic, it's like, it's literally like, cause you know how we are. Like if it doesn't happen within two days, it's, it's over sometimes 20 minutes. You're like, I'm not, I was going to learn French and then I got distracted. Totally. Um, so your shoes are going to come. I know for a fact, you're going to open the package all excited and then see that they're shoes and be like, what? Why did I do this to myself? Running shoes. Yeah, that's happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cool. I already have the Maria. app. The couch, couch to 5K app. <laughs> oh, I'm proud of you. That's a great app. Okay. Uh, last time I went to the doctor, um, I'm not a doctor person at all. I truly do avoid it. Um, I just went, uh, we talked about it actually on the podcast. I sat on a nail right before I went on stage in Atlanta and um, it punctured my skin. And so I was like, oh, I guess I need a tetanus shot. So then I flew the next day to Florida to hang out with my friend for her birthday. She picks me up with her husband. She's like, what do you want to do? And I was like, we have to go to the doctor. I sat on a nail. She's like, cool, great way to spend my birthday. So we just went to like a, a minute clinic in uh, Florida. And I also was like super sick with a cold. And she's like, do you want to do anything about that? I was like, focus. Could you focus? <laughs> it's about tetanus. Um, so I truly just got a tetanus shot, got some Sudafed over the counter because I like was a mess and um, I hope to knock on everything, never see a doctor again. That's the goal. Has the, do you know anybody who's ever had tetanus? Like it seems like such a weird Dude, random I mean, thing. Yeah, but I think it's because you, you get the vaccine. Like you're like you get it as a kid a couple of times, I think. And then they say you're supposed to get it every 10 years. So I do think nobody we know has it because it's a part of that kid package of vaccines or whatever. Again, sounding dumb, but like, I think 
having some of it in your, you're supposed to, like I said, you're supposed to get it every 10 years. But like, even when my mom, I asked my mom, I was like, do I need to get it? It look rusty. She's like, well, when's the last time you got it? I was like, I don't know, mother. I don't know these things. <laughs> right. um, I now have a file. Uh, I have a filing cabinet, which was the first time I decided I became a woman. Uh, when I was uh, 20, I bought a filing cabinet and it made me just feel like I was an adult. And I have a folder called medical, but all it is, is just like, every just any it could be an article that i read that says this is what you should be doing it could be a receipt from the insurance company that i went to a doctor it is such a mess but in my mind it's the closest i have to like really taking care of myself <laughs> this is about the filing cabinet <laughs> we always, everything is about the filing cabinet um uh, my here, question uh, my next question oh, yeah. uh, it's me oh sorry mm, when were you in the best shape of your life? Oh, that's a, that's a two-parter. That's, that's a deep question. Uh, first, 11. <laughs> when I was 11 years old, I was in the peak of my gymnastics fitness shape. I, uh, I started gymnastics when I was three. I quit when I was 14. I actually quit like two times when I was like, I think like 12 and 14. But um, 11, I was like, I mean, I don't even have words. Like, and I was eating garbage, but when you're 11, you can do that and mm. it doesn't matter. But I was working out, I was practicing four times a week for three hours. Like I was pretty convinced I was like Dominique Mucciano and this was my future, even though I wasn't great. I wasn't horrible, but I wasn't great. I remember taking a yoga class with you before I even knew you'd ever done gymnastics and you were like standing on your head and like you'd like slowly, like your legs came up and, and you just stood there like hovering towering over me and my child's pose and I was like fuck you Liz I don't know how you yeah. got so good at yoga <laughs> <laughs> and I was literally like I think I did it once and you were just like what and I was yeah. like so that's where like muscle memory really is a thing like I'm still pretty good about walking on my hands and doing anything that has me kind of inverted because that's just about it's less about strength and it's more about just being comfortable being upside down so i know a lot of people like you still do a lot of that stuff in crossfit and i know people that are like i could never do that i was like you're way stronger than me you can it's just about being comfortable upside down and the feeling of being upside down so i would say first time i was in the best shape of my life when i was 11. second time i was 28. i was training for marathons. So I was running marathons and I'm training for them. Uh, my little brother was living with me and he was into biking. So he would uh, bike around Prospect Park. He would do like 10 or 15 miles. And so I actually borrowed my mom's bike just so we could go and bike ride together. And I hadn't ridden a bike probably since I was 11. Um, so I was running, biking, and then he wanted to get into like better shape. So we started doing CrossFit together. And then at that time, I think I also injured myself and I was doing yoga with a friend. So I was doing like every type of exercise. I actually think I was like the healthiest I was in the sense that I was like eating paleo and I was like doing different types of movements instead of just focused one movement. And I had a, I had a two pack. I oh, was yeah. there for truly, it was there for three weeks. Um, so really it's 28, it's when it's 28, but it's this three week period <laughs> where I was doing all this stuff. And I had the, 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 the showing of the first two and I remember wearing a dress on stage that was like a little tighter and I ne I still never wear dresses on stage and I remember getting off stage and um a friend of mine was like you look really good and I was like I have a two-pack and he goes actually I could kind of see it and I was like first of all I don't know why I yelled at you that I have a two-pack but second of all now I'm almost weirded out that you can kind of see it in this dress but now I regret not wearing a dress every day for those three weeks it's really it's funny because like the the best shape of your life does only happen for about three weeks it's kind of like <laughs> you know when you you like at the fair you hit the you hit the the hammer onto the thing and the thing goes up and goes ding 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 you know like the best yeah. shape of your life is the ding 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 it happens like really quickly and then it just falls apart again I, th I think if people realize that they would take more pictures I mean I'm there's tons of people like on tinder that's just their abs and good for them um <laughs> but the rest of us it really is like I even joked like I was going to get in quarantine shape and I really thought I was on that route for about two weeks. And then, and then, I don't know, as soon as you stop going outside, like two days in a row, you're like, do I really need to go outside? Like, is yeah. that really a thing I need to do? What yeah. about you? When's you? What's your best, best shape? It was about six years ago. I did, um, I, I did hot yoga, like religiously. Uh, but I was also working at a hotel bar. So I was taking well over 10,000 steps a day, I'm sure. 
um, because I was working 10, 12 hours, like crazy hours, and I wasn't drinking. So the, the three of those things, like I was, I was very near my goal weight. You know, it was like two pounds off from my goal weight, but my goal weight was a little ridiculous, but that was also- Your goal weight was unhealthy and you were just like, I want to be unhealthy so that when I stop doing this, I can reach what I'm supposed to be. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And that, I maintained that for like a month, but like, I mean, cause like it took a while to get there and then I got there and I was, I was there for like a month and then it all sort of fell apart, but God, I looked- awesome and I'm just I've still been trying to get back to that and like I I haven't drank in in five months I just, I've been we were doing hot yoga right before this whole madness started and I was starting to like I'm starting to get my clavicles back a little bit but um it's just been so far like that 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 gap I'm trying to bridge has just been so far away for so long you you still have one of my favorite jo- I'm gonna butcher it too but about how um Oh man, I hate that I have already started this, but about trying to lose the last 10 pounds for 15 years. I've been trying oh, to yeah. lose the same, t- I've been trying to lose the same 10 pounds for the last 15 years. Is that what it is? I think so. God, that joke is so old. Like I've been trying to lose 10 pounds for 15 years now and uh, something like that. And like, yeah, it was, I thought it was like always the most relatable statement where I was like, oh, that is all of us. Like there's just, there's just this amount of weight we don't know when we got it and every year it's on our to-do list and every year we're like oh, we'll do it I'll do it again another time i just don't know why it's so hard i don't know why she says having just eaten a half a bar of dark chocolate and two cookies <laughs> why is it so hard um it's my turn oh kind of related what is your favorite thing about yourself it doesn't have to be physical be physical personality whatever ah uh, I don't know. I'm funny and smart, I guess, but I like my shoulders a lot. <laughs> Sorry, I just never heard, except for maybe swimmers, I've never heard anybody be like, my shoulders are pretty I used good. to have amazing clavicles. <laughs> I don't know what my favorite thing about myself is, but I think it's, I think it's like all the things I've done. Like I, if I want to go live somewhere, I'll go live there. If I want to do something, I'll do it. If I want to try stand up, I'll do it. If I want to, I'm a doer. You're a doer. Yeah. So you're, you're a doer. That's so nice. <laughs> What's yours? Okay. I'll say physical is my eyes. Like, I just don't feel like I ever woke up in the morning. Very and expressive like, eyes. That, like, um, that reminds me of your joke. Your, like, one of the, when I first started being friends with you joke, you, it was like, you have very magical eyes. Like, some guy was saying it to, yeah. to you. You have magical eyes. It's like, oh, that's because I'm rolling them. <laughs> <laughs> that was, like, one of the first jokes. That was, God, that joke is, like, 15 years old. But um, that was one of the first jokes that, like, other comics would quote as a way of, like, saying like uh, like acknowledging that they knew my material and that like it was like a compliment like oh and and I was like oh, I'm so, like I was like I'm going viral <laughs> like in my mind like this was like before like internet viral was like truly that big of a deal but like I was like oh, people know my joke um uh yeah so my eyes I think every day I wake up and I hate something about myself um you know it ranges from like my nose, which I've never enjoyed, to my stomach, which is like on whatever day. I can, I, I've hated my elbows. Like I could truly hate anything about myself, but I don't think I've ever not liked my eyes. So, yeah. and that's like, it's also the only thing I've learned to do makeup with. Like I've learned how to do eyeliner. I've learned how to do some fun, not like excessive, but some fun stuff with shadows and eye, eye shadows or whatever. Eyeshadows? That's definitely not how you say that. Um, I feel like I've just been found out that I'm not a woman. I was like, you know, with the shadows that you do. <laughs> <laughs> Alien posing as a woman. And- yeah. Um, so yeah. And then I would say personality. I do like that I'm funny. Like I sometimes get annoyed by how I am in a non-funny, like at a comedy club, I feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be when I'm with a group of comics, but I have noticed my funny pissing me off when I'm at like a party where it, I'm the only comic or like, like I've, my funny bone has hurt me before and has embarrassed me. So it is my favorite thing and the thing I've worked hard to have and to get better at. And I think it's the reason 
I'm more personable and I talk to people. Like I was such a shy, sad person for so long and comedy has made me, and being funny and having the confidence that I am funny has made me who I am. But even today I still go, God damn it, Liz, why do you always have to talk? Why do you always have to make a joke? <laughs> like, so I, 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 it can also piss me off, but it is like, I do like that I'm funny. I like that I'm nice. Like my parents are just really kind people and they raised us to be kind, thoughtful people. And I think the fact, not to say that I'm not, I can't be an asshole, but I think the fact that I've maintained being a kind person into my thirties is like, I find that to be like a weird badge of honor because there's, it's so much easier to be an asshole. And I'm not nearly as nice as I was when I was a kid. I was such a kind child. Yeah, because you don't have any self-esteem as a child. Yeah, but like we were raised so politely and so kind and also like to be like speak when you're spoken to. And so I've really broken out of that. But like, I don't know, the fact that I'm still a nice person and I still care about being a nice person. I still feel bad when I'm not a nice person, which I think I think that goes away. I'm just You're sort smart. of laughing. I'm laughing at you a bit because I've, I've met unkind Liz. Oh, you have. <laughs> you have. But I, I apologize. I'll say that. And then even if that person I, is gone that I can't apologize to because I've clearly been dicks to strangers, I'll tell you I feel really bad. Yeah. And then you have to talk me off a feel bad ledge. And I'll be like, but I hurt their feelings. <laughs> um, I think um, the next question is I, yours. I get to ask. I get to do it. Yeah. Uh, favorite thing about yourself. If stand up wasn't an option like now, what would you be doing for a living? I don't know. I waver because I've thought about that even before the pandemic. Like I waver between like like a personal trainer. Like I always, whenever comedy got really hard, I fantasized about quitting comedy. Like 10 years in, I was like truly struggling emotionally with comedy and I didn't feel like I was where I wanted to be. And I was like, maybe I'll just quit and become a personal trainer. And then I'll be like, help like stretching some girl. And she'd be like, oh my God, you're so funny. You should be a comic. And I'd be like, I could never, like I would just never <laughs> tell anybody I did it for 10 years. I would just be a really funny personal trainer. Um, I really care and like, like physical fitness. And I feel like, not that I'm exceptional at it, but I just, I feel like I like it and I like learning about it. So I always thought like a personal trainer or I am an ideas person and I always thought like PR, like even now with like reading all the books about social media and doing our social media and my own social media, like I kind of like that puzzle piece and how do I display this idea in a way that makes people interested? I think I would probably do some kind of PR. Those are my Okay, Those I can see that. Answers. I you you're you're like the best agent I've ever had. You'd be an amazing agent, but uh yeah. or a therapist or yeah. a life coach. Yeah. You can get all of that. And so yeah. I talk too much to be a therapist or a life coach. Like you'd start telling me about your day and I'd be like, Oh, can I tell you about mine? Um <laughs> I guess. Uh <laughs> I'm on the clock, I paid you for okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Sure, sure, um, sure. Yeah, I think, I don't know, that's hard. I mean, I, it would probably, definitely something with writing. I loved, I loved food for a long time, but I don't know if that, that fire's just been, if that just faded out or if I could like find a thing in food. Again. Like I never wanted to be a chef. I just wanted to travel the world and discover new food. But I would, I would be some sort of, like I would rather have a column for a newspaper and, and, and write, um, or I'd probably well, write a book of, blog. yeah. Uh, well, you who, have you ever nobody fucking reads food blogs like no, every but time, like a successful one i know but like seriously like anytime you go for a recipe and people are like uh like they tell their life story before you even get to the oh, recipe it's just like no one gives a shit just do the recipe and so like food food is a really hard thing to make interesting you know like okay. i think it's got to be food and travel um but even then i don't know i don't I, but but yeah i would i would want to be david sedaris Okay. So we'll just I can see that. I've always seen that for you. I remember when you used to write essays again when we first met and you would write them and you would post them on Facebook. And I was like, This is amazing. And you're like, It's fine. And three people read it. I was like, No, but it's you should do a book. I was very encouraging of you doing a book of essays. You were. Um, I love your writing. Oh, that's so good. Okay. Um oh, I don't know if you know this one. What would you say, what would your friend say is your catchphrase? I think it would be, not, oh man, what was it? Like, like sort of something along the lines of, are you fucking kidding me? Are you like, uh, yeah, I can like, 
I, I don't, I had it before this, before we started and I totally forgot, but it would be something along the lines of what the fuck is this? Are you fucking kidding well, me? Something well, with fuck it, in it, obviously. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> um, I actually think that question is kind of hard because your catchphrase is such a part of you that you don't actually register it. Like, so what do you, what do you think my catchphrase is? Um, that's a good question. I but actually was trying to think of what, what it would be. It's less about, it's more about like certain words you use. Like I overuse the word truly. Um, I overuse the word honestly. Um, uh, there's certain like words that are overused. I mean, I think it was more associated to, to movements, which is just like me doing something and you just being like, no. Like, me, <laughs> like if I was playing with my hair right now, you'd be like, no. Yeah. So I thought of it less as a catchphrase and more of a, a look me registering that look or you just gently like like a mom that's like we're not biting our nails we're not yeah um but yeah it would definitely be like a uh yeah i feel like a bad friend right now you kind of are so yours is um <laughs> go mine, mine mine is probably uh i'm, I'm telling uh, you what yours oh oh please because yours is gonna be different but you don't you don't, when I think of you, Liz Mealy, you're shaking your fist and, and you're also, your eyes are wide and you go, go fuck yourself. Go oh. fuck yourself with all the emphasis. Yeah, no, I get that phrase is never said gently. Um, I would say, uh, yeah, go fuck yourself definitely comes out pretty aggressively and very often. Also eat a dick or I'll set like, um, I'll, I'll set, uh, I'll kill your family. Um, anything that's like, it's real, it's really bad. Cause I have some really like very sweet friends. Like I have such a range of friends that are like comics where you can't say anything that would be awful. And then I have some friends that are like, you're going to go to hell or don't say that you put that, you put that, eth you know, that into the world and you're, it's like you say it over a glass of water and now that water is poisoned. Like I have such an array of friends that like, like, like my friend Nitika is like the kindest person ever. And I'd be like, oh man, I hope their family dies. And she's like, what? Why would you say that? And <laughs> you I was forget like, I that people like aren't around the same people you know, like the the comedians. But I don't. Yeah, and you don't even realize what you're saying. Like that's the meanest thing you could say to some. That's literally what like terrorists do is they kill your family to prove a point. And I go around saying it because someone cut me off in traffic. But like, eat a dick. Um, I'll kill your family. Um, I'll set your house on fire. Just like fun. So Italian um, mafia. You're like so <laughs> Italian. You know what's crazy is my entire family used to say, go kill yourself. Like kill yourself. Like mm. it was my entire family and suicide is so prevalent in our family. So I find it so funny when I make a joke on stage and people are like, would you say that? Like, that's so horrible. And I go, yeah, but like my family has dealt with this stuff and they say it like, like, it's just so weird that I, there is some kind of disconnect between the words I'm saying and how awful they are, but I don't mean it. It's so funny that like well, two you, questions before, I'm like, I'm a really kind person. <laughs> I know. I'm like, that's why I was smiling. I'm like, you're, you're delusional. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not mean. Like, this is the thing is that I might say it, but I've never acted on it. Like my, like, we're a very angry family. But like we're not vin like we're not vindictive. I would never like. There's people that like if you hurt me, I'll make it my mission to hurt you back. I've never felt that way. I might call you up and be like, I hope this person dies in a fire, but I don't do anything about it. I don't like. I literally. I don't even. I. I don't understand the people that write hate comments. I would never do that. I have. I barely comment in general, and now I've actually taught myself to write nice things because I like hearing nice things. But I've never saw something that pissed me off other than forwarding it to my friend and being like, isn't this garbage? But I've never thought to tell the author, like, you are garbage. Like, your ideas are dumb. This is, I don't know why this is why I type. This is um, you, you imitate typing. You are garbage. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty good. But yeah, I, I don't, even though this is aggressiveness is who I am, I don't feel like I'm a bad person. And you might be right. I might be delusional, but I, I feel like, I've always thought actions speak louder than words. No, you're not a bad person at all. And even when you don't like somebody and if you're around them, like say, uh, I have a friend and you're hanging out and they're hanging out and you hate them and you hate them. You will never be mean. You will just not engage. Or you know? I, like, 
I hate people that are passive aggressive. It's like, that's something that's a part of my family that I absolutely can't stand. And I felt myself be passive aggressive and I'll be like, no, no, you say nothing or you're nice. There are no, none of this passive aggressive shit that to me, that I think is like worse than somebody being outright mean to me. I'd rather you be like, you're stupid rather than be like, oh, that's what you think. It's just, it, yeah. I hate it. I yeah, hate yeah, it. yeah. Um, it is, uh, is the it worst. Yours? It's mine. Yours? Okay, sorry. No, is it? I don't know. I don't know either. I think it's yours. Uh, all right. Who in your life knows you best? You. It really is. I would say, I would say it's a tie between you and probably my sister, Emily. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I just, I don't, me and Em are so similar that it actually, like, this happened last night. I was watching, like, I like watching, like, makeup and hair tutorials, uh, just for ideas, especially with curly hair, and my hair's long, getting even longer now. It's just stuff to do, especially because I'm trying not to use a blow dryer on it and just try to heal the sadness that is my hair. Um, so I was watching a tutorial on French braiding, and I forwarded it to my sister, and I was like, I think my main quarantine goal is to learn how to like French braid my own hair and she comes back in two seconds and it's a list of quarantine goals and it's like French learn to French braid she's like why are we the same person oh my so god I I really think my sister knows we look the same we have I've had people that I go hey my sister's gonna call you don't get freaked out um we have the same voice but like we sound similar we look similar and I I just even though we're five years apart we're just like the same person that's why i loved um, when i was living in la and she moved to la because she was my liz mealy of the west actually emily <laughs> yeah. that's not that's not fair if emily if you're watching you're not you're, you're the mealy of the west you're not the liz mealy of the west she's definitely different than I, you like she she's is. more I mean, talented sister, she's funnier always. i agree <laughs> she's, i actually don't disagree with either of those <laughs> she is entirely i think funnier than i am i think she's a, a clearly incredible singer um but she's also um so she's a receptionist now, but like e even before that, like she should be somebody's like personal assistant. Like she's helped, she's been like my personal assistant when I've been in Europe and I need her to do stuff at home. And she's so like organized and diligent and like, I don't know, she would, she would be the, I don't know, everything she does, she she's just magic. an it. excellent dresser and her makeup's amazing. Oh like, yeah, those are so, very true. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love person. Emily. We but should yeah, have her on at some point. We should. Um, yeah, I would say, I would say you and Em probably know me like, you know my emotions before I know my emotions, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Who would you, who would you say is your person? You, 100%. I almost feel like, because you, you asked this question, Liz, and I'm like, well, it feels <laughs> a little like you, you're, you're fishing, but um, you, uh, Kat Reinhardt. Uh, oh yeah, Kat. How long did you guys live together? Uh, I think it was two feels like it's more than two years three years i think three years yeah. um but yeah you two probably know me the best um, i would say living with somebody kind of fast and johnny forward. actually knows me really well yeah I, yeah i'm probably it's probably like dating living with somebody and then uh working with somebody and in that sense you get to know them and everything that sucks about them like you yeah get, is it really it's not just who knows you best and like what's great about it. it's like literally the fact that you like you know when I'm about to like explode. Like, I just feel like you know when I'm either about to cry or I'm about to yell. And like, you're, I, I just see you like putting on like, like a feelings poncho and being like, Muffin, are you okay? <laughs> I know when like, I, I'll feel a chill in the air. There was one time when we were in the car, we were, I was driving and I just, I just got a shiver and I was like, Muffin, are you hungry? Yes. <laughs> We'll get some food. You're terrifying. Uh, You're frightening. Also, we've been apart for so long that you know what, when I'm upset via text message, it's actually a real get, it like blows me away. And it's made me more <laughs> aware of like other people's texting habits to be a better friend in that sense. But you were the first one that's like, you stopped using emojis. Are you okay? And I was like, I'm not okay. <laughs> <laughs> I always got your emotions right. But like when I first started texting with Johnny, man, I'm way off. Because men text differently too. He, do. he doesn't use emojis. He doesn't use exclamation points. Um, and half the time I thought he hated my guts. But it was just him. It was just him. 
but <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm a man. I don't know what kind of my little pony friendship you had. That makes totally. you think. <laughs> and, but with you, like I've just known you and your texting habits for so long that I can tell when you're off. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. And I've started to notice even when I'm doing it, I'm like, Oh, I'm sad. Okay. Like it's, I, I mean, I'm also somebody that wasn't aware of their emotions for probably 30 years. So even somebody else being able to see it, like I felt like more people understood me before I understood myself. And so I'm kind of doing backwards work, mm. but um, yeah, that's so nice. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, oh, what's something you know is unhealthy or not good for you, like personally, but you still eat regularly? Burritos. <laughs> Johnny and I eat burritos every night and now we make he's a vegetarian we make vegetarian burritos he uses a corn mince like the brand is called corn and it's just a fake mince they're really good he adds a lot of cheese and um burritos used to be the the naughty thing in LA that we would do if um a we were out late night drinking or b we woke up hungover <laughs> it was always burritos but it was always like the like oh fuck it go ahead but we eat burritos all the time and then the other day I was like I don't think I can eat burritos every night I'm getting a lot of weight and he was like I don't want to eat burritos every night. You always bring up burritos. I was like, yeah, I do. <laughs> he was like, it always sort of breaks my heart when you say burritos. I'm like, okay, yeah, that is yeah. my fault for sure. <laughs> but like, yeah, uh, we got to stop doing this. And you're like, yeah, I've been saying it for years. But they're so yeah. good. They're so good. My God, burrito is the perfect food. I feel nothing towards burritos. That's, that actually kind of blew my mind. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> That's, we just broke up. Okay. Um, you're like, Oh, my friendship just ended over Zoom. Interesting. <laughs> um, mine's mine's too. Uh, gluten. I definitely. I'm not. I don't have celiac, but like, I definitely have some kind of gluten intolerance, and I know it. Um, I've gone stretches without having it, and I've felt better. And then I've gone stretches where I've had it once a week, and it's been fine. But this quarantine, I'm like, we'll just have it twice a day. Not a big deal. That's like so little. Um, and it is. It is a big deal. So gluten is. I don't know. I miss it, and so I just. I can't get away from it. And then the other thing is Emmy got me into bubble tea. Mm. So I remember this so clearly. So my, my little sister, um, her three, her three roommates when she was in college were Asian from Asia and they got her into all types of like, just weird Asian stuff. Like these like rice things, like her fridge. I just didn't recognize her fridge. Oh, and they lived in little Korea when she was a sophomore. So she just got into all this stuff and then now her husband's Filipino. So she's just like, she's like morphed into this person that knows more about Asian culture than I think some Asians I'm saying it. Um, especially because her, her in-laws like taught her how to make dumplings and stuff. And I've never been so jealous, but um, she, she was like, you should try bubble tea. And I was like, okay. And I remember trying it and being like, I don't know the same way that like the first time I tried beer, I was like, I don't mm. get it. And then I had it the second time and I was like, this is kind of fun. And then third time I was obsessed. And now I just, it makes me happy. And when I'm sad, I want bubble tea, but I would say three out of 10 times it hurts my stomach. It, cre do it. it creeps up on you. Like first time I had bubble tea and that bubble made its way through the straw into my mouth. I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> what is this you're yeah, chewing yeah. it and you're like what the fuck am I like, what is this what is this thing and, like, <laughs> and then the next thing I know I'm like I need it give isn't me bubble that, tea isn't that so weird that's exactly how I felt like I had it the first time and I was like I don't hate it but I don't like it and then the second time I was like I can see why my sister likes it and then the third time I was like this is my personality now <laughs> this is who yeah. I am I'm not exaggerating almost anywhere I've gone, um, London, like, I mean, except for when I've gotten in Asian countries, but like, it's always, everyone's Asian. And then it's just me. And I was just like, did I discover bubble tea? Did I, <laughs> am I, am I bringing it to the bigger world? What I do love about it is it's, um, is it Taiwanese? It's not, first of all, I thought it was like an H, this is how silly I am. I thought it was like an ancient like beverage or whatever it's like from the 80s it's like almost like dip and dots of like taiwan it's like not like it's not this great cultural thing it's tapioca balls and some tea but in my mind i was like i'm so cultured i have bubble tea and you're just not you're just truly having dip and dots that took off that like are real 
but yeah. I do love them. They are. I mean, I want some bubble tea now that you've mentioned it five times. I don't know what Thank to you. do with okay. that because there's no way to get it. It's my question. Hardest part <laughs> about doing a podcast with uh, Maria slash with Liz. So I guess since I'm asking, I would say, what's the hardest part of doing a podcast with me? Um, I can't drink any water. For I was going thing. to say that at the same time you said it. I know. <laughs> Because like I before I'll have my little cup and then I, it's just hard for me to be like, OK, and then I'm going to mute it. And then I have to do it at the exact time that you're going on like some kind of tangent because I don't want to have dead air. So it's like really stressful. So instead of actually doing anything, I just kind of swallow. Like, you're like, very, tell me more about that, Maria. I'm like, oh, she's really interested. And you're just like, yeah, oh, yeah. Thirsty. And I'm just trying to drink beverages. But yeah, I would say it's doing these hour sessions without being allowed to drink anything. Okay, but like, it's like, an hour. It's an hour. I'm Do you really super. need water? <laughs> I know. I, I can't, like, because when I'm editing it and I just hear your, mm, mm, and I'm like, just stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I get it. I know. And I know I'm a difficult person. My misophonia has. You're the only one who has ever dealt with it. That's why you're my only friend. <laughs> also, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I'm, like, getting misophonia because of you, but I do feel like I'm more aware of sounds because I know how much they bother you. So, like, I, I, even though we don't spend most of the year together, I'm still, and even, I mean, this, even before the podcast, we still talked a fair amount, but I, I can, whatever that awareness is so I don't upset you, <laughs> I, it holds even when you're not around. Mm. So I do find that when I, cause I've been doing tons of zooms and, and podcasts and stuff from home now, I am a little more apprehensive to drink while recording those. Sorry. Like, it's just funny. It's okay. I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Um, but it is, um, there are times when I am parched and it's <laughs> causing me a lot of anxiety. <laughs> you will drink when I tell you to drink. Do you, can I guess what my worst, like the yes. worst thing about, is it the yelling and the ranting, the going on long unfiltered rants that go nowhere? I mean, I was going to say you talk too much. Yeah, that you is You just true. talk so goddamn much. And when I'm editing, all the Liz lines are like, bop, 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 for like an hour. <laughs> and I'm like, there's, where's me? I'm in here somewhere. Yep, and no, like, I feel like it's hard to find a clip where we have both said something in a minute period. <laughs> mm -hmm. These are all but valid points. But it's, that's fine. Like it's, um, you have more to say than I do. I have very little to say. If I were on a podcast on my own, I would just, I'd be like, uh, yeah, this day was good. And then I would end it. <laughs> you bring things up and I go, oh yeah, that, no, it's fine. It's, it's, um, you do talk a lot. I do. Uh, that's uh that would be a complaint for most people in my life. <laughs> uh, I just feel like if Justin watches this, if my boyfriend watches it, he'll be like, "Thank you." <laughs> trying to say like, think somebody had to say it. Um. Oh, that was our last question. We did great. We did it. We did it, guys. Um. This was a like a little a gift. I don't know if what we do is a gift. I wouldn't um, call it a gift. It wasn't a gift. Um, this is a, just like get to know us where we are trying to learn to do more recording stuff. Um, we are so grateful that you guys are listening to our podcast um, and being a part of this. Uh, yeah. If you like us, however you are watching this, um, please subscribe. So if this is on Instagram, YouTube, whatever, uh, subscribe to us. Uh, please subscribe to our channel. Um, we have a Patreon. Uh, tons of bonus stuff for Patreons and anything else? Yeah, um, I just want to say thank you to yeah. every thank one of our Patreons oh. so far. Like, uh, you know, we've had yeah. we've had some Patreons and it's it's been we're really appreciative and we're really happy you're there. And we hope that you like all the the bonus content and stuff that we're putting in there. Um, thank you to those of you who are emailing in with uh, concerns or questions or tips or you know whatever we love hearing from you it absolutely makes our day like we're not lying like it really makes yeah. our day <laughs> <laughs> we're truly like oh my god and then you guys give us like great advice and i was like oh i didn't like there's somebody there's like two different people that gave us great eczema ex advice um or psoriasis advice as well um i just, misophonia stuff i love hearing about people's misophonia yeah so keep writing in we love all it it might take us a little bit to get back both personally and then on the podcast itself but we are we are reading them um and we have plans um what we want to do with them and 
like we always say, we, um, we, we're learning as we do this. So we, we like hearing from you. Um, but yeah. And finally, rate and review, if you can, please, on iTunes and Stitcher. Uh, it helps us out a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, we like hearing nice words. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, nice stuff. <laughs> Thanks um, for listening and watching. And watching us. We did it. Yay. Bye. Look at these little tiny pictures of Maria. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.